uh, was this just about that drop in sales or was this more about margins? You know, it, it's actually about a post-pandemic readjustment. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that it talked about was how retailers are not holding as much inventory, and that was a real surprise to analysts mm -hmm. on the call. And I should point out, these results, they're bad. Volume's down across the yeah. board, except for a North American food service. And then that's, you know, restaurants and the like, but they're not terrible, right? And yeah. in fact, you know, fourth quarter was not so great, but their outlook for the year is three or four percent sales growth. That's in fact a little bit better than some analysts had. That the expected. conversation we were having around this company and some of its peers was the ability for them to bump up prices, even though they were doing it relatively small increments. They were going up. And if you believe that consumers are under stress right now, you have to believe that maybe they trade down from a name brand like a General Mills, like Gold Medal or something, and go down to a generic or something that's a little bit cheaper. Yeah, and, and the move for these packaged good companies has been to have more than just one option for mm. uh, potential consumers. But the, you know, the executives on the call definitely talking about elasticity of demand, and indeed those consumers pricing down. Mm. And the CEO also saying that most of those price increases that they had been doing, you know, in line with inflation, but also maybe a bit beyond because so they could take in some profit. Most of those are baked in, though they could see some price adjustments, some price yeah. increases ahead. You mentioned that analysts were surprised by uh, the way that retailers were managing their inventory and perhaps that they're drawing down on it. What did General Mills say specifically about how retailers uh, are behaving from their point of view? Yeah, so they said they talked to a lot of the big uh, grocery stores, et cetera, about how much inventory they had. And that these retailers have been very concerned about the ability to get supply uh, during the pandemic. There were all these supply chain snarls. Now they're saying they're really reducing this inventory because they're not as concerned anymore. Also, holding inventory, you know, there's interest rate uh, pressures associated with yeah. that. Interest rates are higher, so they have to pay more to have as much inventory in the store, and so that's why everyone's trying to keep this inventory pretty low. They also have better technology than they did pre-pandemic, uh, and that's been able, to, it allows them to moderate a little bit. Right, they can manage product. it a little bit. Bit better. Yeah. What about the spillover effect into its competitors or its peers? What kind of moves in sympathy are you seeing? I mean, look, you look at the uh, packaging S&P 500 index, everybody is down today, though not everybody quite as much Mondelez, Tyson Foods not seeing the same kind of hit. I, I think it's likely because of what was happening with these retailers not holding as much inventory on the books. That's something we really didn't hear a lot about when most of these names uh, reported back in late April. So this is seemingly a little bit of a new one. And of course, you, know, you still have these concerns about the consumer uh, continuing to come up in the call. And, you know, uh, of course, these guys saying a little bit about that today. Uh, so I, I know they're not going to uh, be too candid here about volume growth or maybe lack thereof here. But when you keep talking about inventory here, I mean, when I think inventory, I think of maybe less perishable goods here. I mean, when a, a retailer says we're scaling back inventory, to me, that seems about less about stocking and more about the fact that their customers just aren't buying as much of that particular product. You know, it could be. I mean, yeah. we're seeing customers going to stores with smaller ticket sizes. And, yeah. of course, you know, they they themselves may not be holding as much inventory in their pantry. They just don't have as many boxes of Cheerios in the same way. But a lot of it is, you know, the retailers yeah. not having that as well. It's not like we're seeing empty shelves. Yeah. Um, and, we should, and we should just state the obvious, which is cereal has always been overpriced.